Theory of Beam Gravity and Mercury Anomaly One of the undiscovered basic phenomena of the universe remains to be the nature of gravitation. We will attempt to explain the essence of gravitation by relying on the following. 1. Search for an answer to the question. Why do the following particles and waves travel at the same speed? Different kinds of electromagnetic waves, neutrinos, electric currents, gravity. Traveling precisely at the same speed shows a direct correlation. 2. The extraordinary results of the experiment we conducted. Imagine a laser beam from a fixed laser source is sent to a fixed panel and the travel direction of the photons will alter at different hours of the day. This change in location is not chaotic. It changes in one direction, moves up and down, and this movement is repeated in certain time periods with precise movement amplitudes. An explanation will be given in the experiment section. In addition, we suggest two more experiments to conduct. Beam. We will start with the aforementioned question. What makes photons of light, radio waves, electricity, neutrino, and gravity move at the same speed? A logical explanation to this question can be like this. There is a universal conveyor which carries all these particles. That is, different types of particles and waves are only the passengers of this transport system. Various physical processes generate different types of particles and waves. Afterwards, the Russian conveyor system catches these particles and carries them. Therefore, they all move with the same speed, the speed of the conveyor system. We do not see or feel this transport system. However, the behavior of the waves and particles transported by this system gives us certain information about the features of the conveyor system. For instance, light beams spread in all directions along straight lines. Thus, the conveyor system may also be regarded as a system consisting of straight beams that spread from all directions in all directions with the speed of light. We will go in accordance with the topic of this research and call the beams of the conveyor system gravitational beams or just beams if the contact is clear. The research itself will be called theory of beam gravity or just TBG. Now, we'd like to address another question. Why do photons not lose a part of that energy and speed when they are reflected from a mirror? The photons do not lose energy, but the mirror receives some kinetic energy. There is a paradox here. Does it mean the law of conversation of energy is violated? The assumption with the gravitational beams provides a comprehensive answer here. When the photons touch the surface of a mirror, they do not jump back by hitting the surface of the mirror. In the reflection spot, they are passed to gravitational beams that move in the reverse direction. When hitting the surface, the mirror receives kinetic energy. At the exact moment, the photon is captured by the gravitational beams moving in the reverse direction. The beams carrying the photons towards the mirror and away from the mirror all move at the same speed. So the photons move with the same speed before and after the reflection. Neutrino contribution. Let us look at the following experiments connected with neutrino. 1. The experiment called the Poltergeist project. The result is a small part of the neutrino that passes through the matter clash with the nuclei of the atoms. Neutrino is absorbed and turns the atoms of chlorine into the atoms of argon. 2. The experiments of Super Kamiokande. It revealed that when the stream of neutrino passes through the thickness of our planet, not all the spectral particles reach the opposite surface of Earth. According to the results of this experiment, Almost half of the particles get absorbed by the matter of the planet, and only half of them reach the other surface on the opposite side of the terrestrial globe. Neutrinos move at the speed of light. It means that they are also transported 
by gravitational beams. Those neutrinos that reach the nuclei are absorbed. But how do the beams which reach the nuclei behave? Logically, they are either broken or their power, intensity or any parameter must become strongly weakened. The comparison of the poltergeist project and the experiment of Super Kamiokande show that the more amount of the matter on the path of neutrino, the more of them will be absorbed. We may continue on this thought and confirm that if the mass of the matter is more, there will be more nuclei on the path of beams, which means more amount of beams will be absorbed. It gives rise to the interrelation between the mass of the matter and the fourth of gravitation. Gravitation the fight of the opposite beams. A celestial body influences the beams and absorbs part of them. It means that the beams also exert influence on the body in proportion to the amount absorbed. Let us suppose that the big sphere on the scheme is the Earth and the smaller one is another body under the gravitational attraction of the Earth. Two types of beams exert an impact on the body. A1 beams are the continuation of the A beams. They pass through the whole body of the Earth and are partially absorbed and weakened. However, B beams do not pass through the planet and thus do not get weakened. That is to say, repulsing A1 beams are weaker than the pressing B beams. As a result, the smaller object is being pushed towards the Earth by stronger B beams. It is clear that the bigger the celestial body, the more beams they absorb, and therefore stronger the difference between A1 and B beams. This explains the direct dependency on the force of attraction on the masses of the interacting bodies. The force of gravitation does not only depend on the mass of the interacting bodies. One of the important factors is the distance between the bodies. On the other hand, from the perspective of TBG, the force of gravitation depends on the difference between the repulsing and pressing beams. If the number of counteracting beams increases, the mentioned difference also becomes greater and the force of gravity grows. The number of beams are not known to us. We know that light and other electromagnetic waves are everywhere and spread in all directions equally. It means that, in all parts of the space, the density of the beams is the same. Therefore, the area of some fields through which the counteracting beams pass may be chosen to compare the quantity of these beams. Let's try explaining it by looking at this scheme. The big sphere on the scheme is the Earth, and the smaller one is somebody under the attraction of the Earth. In order to compare, the quantity of the beams, we can take, for instance, the field alpha, that is, at L distance from the small body. The Earth is spherical, so the form of the field alpha should be circular. The distance between the center of the Earth and the small body is R. A sufficiently simple calculation shows that, in the case of increase of distance R, the area of circle alpha decreases equal to the square of this increase. It is known that, with the increase of the distance between the bodies, the force of gravitation also decreases equal to the square of this increase. Absolute Stationary System The general picture of the starry sky has remained unchanged in the course of a long time. We observe distinct and stable pictures of distant galaxies, quasars, and super new stars. The cosmic satellites registered distinct pictures of faraway quasars. A smooth and accurate shot of quasars is possible only if trillions of photons that leave the surface of the quasar at the same time reach the objective of the photo camera at the same instant as well. Imagine that three not interconnected photons leave the quasar at the same moment, travel for tens of billions of years, and simultaneously reach the objective of the camera. This kind of 
unimaginable simultaneity is possible only in the case of an absolute linearity and uniformity of gravitational beams. The fact that two separate photons move absolutely synchronically in the course of billions of years may shed some light on some characteristics of gravitational beams. These properties are the followings. A. The beams preserve their absolute straight linearity in the course of the whole universe. B. All beams spread at the same speed, at the speed of light. C. Spatial location of beams in the scale of the whole universe is exactly fixed and does not change their positions. Let us imagine for a moment that the speed and direction of the movement of beams are changeable. Had it been the case, we couldn't have been able to see clear picture of objects at several meters away, let alone far away galaxies. Another factor that proves fixed beams is stellar aberration. If that was not the case, we couldn't observe stable aberration. Adding it all together, it becomes evident that there is a stable system in space, which consists of beams directed from all sides to all sides, and all of which retain their fixed position and have a speed equal to the speed of light. This system fills the entire universe. Movements of planets, stars, and even whole galaxies take place relative to this web of fixed beams. On the other hand, there are countless numbers of points in the whole universe that are stationary with regard to the said system of beams. The system which unites all these stationary points is called Absolute Stationary System. We'll call it ASS. Application of ASS allows us to explain many processes of anisotropy, the macro processes in galactic scales and microprocesses on subatomic levels take place in relation and interconnected to the gravitational beams. In the universe, everything is in the state of a complicated movement. If the speed and direction of the movement in relation to ASS change, then the parameters of interaction between the beams and all the elementary particles also change. Such an uninterrupted variability creates the total anisotropy of all physical, chemical, and even biological processes. On the other hand, despite the complexity of movement in space, there are certain cycles. For instance, the movement of Earth has daily, monthly, yearly, and much more complicated stages of cycles. If parameters of movements are repeated, then the histograms of all possible anisotropy must also repeat with a corresponding periodicity. All this has been confirmed by experiments. For instance, the phenomenon of macroscopic fluctuation unequivocally shows that anisotropy of numerous processes has an undeniable daily simultaneity. That is, the anisotropy histograms of absolutely different processes have a distinct daily reiteration. In addition, these daily reiterations are connected not with solar days, but much more with sidereal days. This fact also confirms that the phenomenon of anisotropy depends on the movement of Earth in relation to ASS. Experiment 1. A beam from a fixed laser source is sent to a fixed panel, which is placed 160 meters away from the laser source. Two additional control panels are placed between the last panel and the laser source. The first control panel is placed 30 meters away from the source and the second one 60 meters away. Each control panel has a hole in its center with a diameter of 3 millimeters. The laser source, two control panels and the last panel have all been fastened to the ground to make sure that they don't move. The beam from the laser source passes through the two holes of the control panels and falls onto a scale on the last panel where a light circle emerges. The purpose of control panels and holes is to make sure that the laser beam does not change its direction in respect to its source. According to the principle that light travels along a straight line, the beam from the laser source must always fall onto the same point on the last panel without ever changing. However, 
This is not the case. The light circle on the scale changes its location over certain time intervals. This change in location is not chaotic. It changes in one direction, moves up and down. Additionally, this movement is repeated in certain time periods with precise movement amplitudes. On different days, the light circle changes its location from 3 mm to 10 to 12 mm. The movement of Earth in space and its mutual effects on other space objects are complicated. For this reason, the gradual movement of light circle on the last panel is also quite complicated. However, we've managed to identify patterns. During daytime, starting from 11 am to 12 pm, the light circle appears on the highest point on the panel. Closer to evening, starting from 6 to 7 pm, the light circle starts moving down and reaching the lowest point on the panel around midnight. Let's assume that the yellow circle in the picture is the sun and the blue one is the earth. During the aforementioned experiment, repulsing A and pushing B beams affect the beam from the laser. A significant amount of B beams pass through the sun during daytime and become relatively weakened. As a result, laser beam bends towards the weak beams, namely towards the sun. This bending shows itself on the last panel as a climb. At night time, B beams do not pass through the sun, do not get weakened. Under relatively stronger B beams, the photons incline towards the earth and the light circle on the scale moves down. Let's also note that the light circle on the last panel sometimes gets bigger and sometimes smaller. We have also observed intensive shaking of the light circle at some times. On a period of 12 to 15 days, the light point on the scale will move down about 2.5 to 3 centimeters and then return to its position after 25 to 15 minutes. The above experiment was conducted in open air. Thus, the effects of factors such as temperature, humidity, and etc. haven't been completely eliminated. Even though these factors do not make any significant difference in the results, it's hard to say that they don't affect at all. In order to get more precise results, the experiment should be conducted in a vacuum environment. This can be done by placing a laser source, control panels, and a scale in a metal pipe where a vacuum environment is created. This experiment allows us to explain phenomenon of gravitational rising differently. We will use a simplified scheme. During movement in space, the photon is influenced by two beams traveling in opposite directions. B beams traveling left and A beams traveling right. So, when there is not a big celestial body nearby, the A and B beams have the same strength. Their impacts on the photon cancel each other completely and the photon continues retaining rectilinear movement. However, things are quite different when there is a big celestial body nearby. For example, the sun. While passing through the sun, B beams are partially absorbed and weakened. Thus, B beams become weaker than A beams and two unequally powerful beams influence the photon. As a result of their total impact, the photon inclined towards the sun. Experiment 2. We suggest another experiment to prove the existence of absolute stationary system and movement of Earth relative to ASS. Let's explain the essence and techniques of the experiment with the help of the scheme below. The distance between points A and B is 3 kilometers. Scale alpha, laser source alpha, atomic clock alpha, and femtocamera alpha are placed at point A. Scale beta, laser source beta, atomic clock beta, and femtocamera beta are placed at point B. Atomic clocks are synchronized. The scales reflect light very well. In small time intervals, such as one second, Laser beams are sent from point A to point B, and vice versa. The purpose of this experiment is to determine how long it will take the photons to reach from point A to point B, 
and from point B to point A. The movement of the laser beams along a scale and the display of the atomic clock will be monitored with the femto cameras. A laser beam is sent from laser source alpha. Femto camera alpha captures the moment when the beam passes the center of the scale alpha. Femto camera beta also captures the moment when the beam reaches the center of the scale beta. The difference in showings of the atomic clocks alpha and beta will tell us how long it takes for the photons to travel from point A to point B. We repeat this process after one second. However, in reverse, and find out how long it takes to travel from point B to A. According to beam gravity theory, the time it takes for the photons to travel from point A to point B will be different from the time it takes them to travel from point B to point A. In addition, this difference will vary depending on the rotation of Earth around its axis during the day. Experiment 3 The showings of the atomic clocks placed at different altitudes will differ. This is shown by experiments. The standard physics model explains this phenomenon by stating that when we get further away from the surface, the gravity becomes weaker and time changes faster. Beam gravity theory, on the other hand, explains this phenomenon differently. Atomic clocks count the atomic rhythms. The frequency of the rhythms do not change over course of billions of years. Let's answer the following question then. What factor makes such accurate and stable rhythms? Earth is rotating around its own axis. All the objects on the surface, including atomic clocks, are rotating with it as well. When the clocks are at a cool altitude from the surface, they move along the same circle. However, when one of the clocks is placed at a higher altitude than the other, it will move along a bigger circle. Thus, its linear speed will be greater. During movement in space, the atoms pass through the gravitational beams. From the perspective of beam gravity theory, every passing through a beam creates a new rhythm. Faster speed means passing through more gravitational beams. Therefore, faster speed begets more rhythms. Thus, getting further away from the surface does not actually lead to changes in time flow. Rather, the rhythms of the atoms in the atomic clocks are increasing. We can conduct an experiment to test this theory. The experiment can be conducted with the help of simple device shown in the scheme. Two horizontal surfaces where the clocks will be placed upon are attached to a vertical bar. Maximal movement amplitude of the surfaces is 10 meters. Two atomic clocks are synchronized at an equal altitude closer to the equator. To do this, both of the surfaces are lowered to a zero altitude. Then, we raise one of the atomic clocks to a 10 meter height and note the difference in the showings of the clocks after six hours. The clock that's placed on a higher altitude will move along a bigger circle, thus will move at a bigger speed. We repeat this process multiple times by placing the clocks on different surfaces. Second part of the experiment will be conducted in a place as close to a pole as possible. For instance, North Pole. And the experiment is repeated in the same manner. Near the pole, both the atomic two atomic clocks, despite the difference in level, will move along approximately the same circle. It means both the atomic clocks will move at almost the same linear speed and the difference between the showings of the clocks will be too small. As a result, the difference in the showings of the clocks will be higher when they are placed closer to the equator and it will be smaller when they are placed closer to the poles. Gravity and movement. The precession of Mercury's orbit. According to the theory of beam gravity, there is interaction between the particles and the beams. If there is interaction, 
then there will be resistance during movement. Resistance force depends on the speed. The faster the parties move relative to each other, the greater is the resistance. According to TBG, the strength of gravitational force depends on the amount of absorbed beams by the matter. When speed increases, resistance becomes more intensive, and therefore, more beams get absorbed. Thus, the difference between the repulsing and pressing beams becomes greater. Let's take a look at the scheme below. Assume that the circle on the scheme is planet Z. It's subjected to the influence of beams A and B. If planet Z remains stationary in relation to ASS, then the absorption extent of beams A and B become equal in force. Therefore, the gravitational force will be equivalent on all sides of the planet. Now, let's analyze the case in which the planet Z moves with the speed V in the direction that B1 beams are traveling. It means that, in relation to A beams, the planet moves at a greater speed. In this case, the resistance between A beams and the matter of the planet will be greater. The beams will be absorbed more intensively and A1 beams will be much weaker. But B beams do not pass through the planet and do not get weakened. Thus, the difference between A1 and B beams in the movement state becomes greater in comparison with the stationary state and gravity will be stronger on the rear side of the planet. The higher the speed, the stronger the gravitation. If additional gravitational factor emerges in the movement state, then for simplicity we will call this gravitation of movement. Gravitation of movement will be equal to the difference of gravitational forces between when the celestial body is in the movement state and when it's in the stationary state. So, F double dash equals F1 minus F2. Here, F double dash represents the gravitation of movement. F1, the gravitational force in the movement state, and F2, the gravitational force in the stationary state. Introducing gravitation of movement concept in a different context explains the precession of Mercury's orbit. The Sun orbits around the center of galaxy in a spiral manner, not elliptic. During this kind of movement, the localization area of gravitation of movement behind the Sun also changes. According to the mentioned above, the distance between the planet and the Sun will be smaller when the planet is exactly behind the Sun. The smallest distance between Mercury and the Sun is the perihelion of Mercury's orbit. During the Sun's spiral movement in the galaxy, the gravitation of movement's localization area changes constantly. This change forces Mercury's perihelion to change in synchronization. There are some phenomena that conform to the concept of gravitation of movement. Scientists explain differently why the planet's orbits in our solar system lie on the same plane. On the other hand, majority of stars in spiral galaxies are also gathered on the same plane, the galactic disk. Solar system and all galaxies are in composite motion in space. Despite this complexity, all these dynamic systems preserve this principle of gathering on the same plane. Thus, this behavior cannot be a coincidence, rather a regularity. So, there must be a force that gathers and keeps the planets and billions of stars on the same plane. Now, logically speaking, this force is the gravitation of movement that forms on the rear side of the black hole at the galactic center, as well as behind the Sun. Friction among the particles of matter and gravitational beams give birth to a new question. Why do the celestial bodies not slow down or cease their movement? Theory of beam gravity answers this question in such a way. 1. 
There is the unfolding of the universe. The movement of celestial bodies is supported by the general motion. That is, resistance is compensated by this induced motion. Two, the beams themselves are also moving at light speed. Let's try explaining it by looking at the scheme about planet Z. If the planet moves at a great speed, there will be strong resistance between the particles located on the front part of the planet and A beams. The increase in resistance will exert a breaking impact on the particles on the front side of the planet. At the same time, this increase will lead to even bigger absorption of A beams and therefore less number of A1 beams will reach the particles on the rear side of the planet. So, the particles on the rear side will be affected by lessened amount of breaking A1 beams. But, the amount of pushing B beams do not get lessened. If the breaking effect is weakened while pushing effect stays the same, then the particles on the rear side will gain additional push power. As a result, during motion, the breaking effect on the front side particles becomes stronger, while the push effect on the rear side particles gets also stronger. So, the breaking effect on the front is compensated by the additional push on the back. Therefore, the uniform movement of the planet is preserved. Dark matter or effect of gravitational summing. According to the law of universal gravity, if the distance of stars to the center of galaxy grows, their orbital speed must decline accordingly. In reality, this does not happen. Then, if the increased distance does not reduce the speed and the structure of galaxy does not collapse, the gravitational force must also get bigger in proportion to the distance. Scientists explain this paradox with the existence of dark matter. Theory of beam gravity explains this phenomenon differently. Let's have a look at it on the scheme below. Star Z is located in the disk. Star X is in the halo. Between the Z star and the black hole, there are hundreds of millions of stars. Repulsing A beams pass through a large quantity of stars before they reach the Z star. Overall, while passing through stars, beams get partially absorbed and become weakened. The very long distance between the black hole and the Z star means more number of stars on the path and thus even greatly weakened A beams. The peculiar summation effect appears. On the other hand, B beams do not pass through big number of stars and do not get as much weakened. As a result, the difference between the repulsing A beams and pushing B beams becomes greater. From the point of beam gravity theory, the scale of gravitation depends on the difference between the repulsing and pushing beams. The greater the difference is, the bigger is the force of gravitation. Contingently, we can call this attraction as the effect of gravitational summing. As we get further away from the center of galaxy, the effect of gravitational summing increases. On the other hand, there is attraction between the black hole and the star Z, which depends on the mass of the black hole and the distance between the black hole and the star itself. This attraction changes according to the law of universal gravity. We will call this gravity the black hole gravity. If the distance between the black hole and the star Z increases, then the force of black hole gravity decreases. At the same time, the effect of gravitational summing grows with the increasing distance. Thus, the loss in the black hole gravity is compensated by the gain from the effect of gravitational summing. Therefore, the orbital speed of the star does not change. Situation with the star X is different. There does not exist a big amount of stars between the black hole and the star. Consequently, the repulsing A-beams do not get absorbed or weakened. 
So, here, the effect of gravitational summing is not observed. As it follows, the increased distance between X star and the center of galaxy results in a declined force of attraction. The force of gravity is weaker, and hence the orbital speed of X is reduced. Not only star Z, rather, all the objects in the galactic disk fall under the influence of gravitational summing effect. Which means that, compared to the halo, the force of gravitation in the disk is stronger. Let's take a look at some physical phenomena that confirm this statement. 1. The chemical content of stars in the halo and the disk is considerably different. The amount of heavy elements in the stars in halo is significantly less than the stars in the disks. It's a known fact that, in order for the heavier elements to form, the presence of high temperature and pressure is a must. Extremely high temperature and pressure has to be created as a result of compression of the matter in the star in a grander scale. This mechanism that gives birth to large compression in the disk can be explained in such a way. Effect of gravitational summing leads to stronger attraction of stars in the disk towards the center of galaxy. In turn, the increase in the orbital speed along the circle makes a greater centrifugal force unavoidable. As a result, the star in the disk gets compressed between substantial centrifugal and gravitational forces, as if placed in a clamp. We will call this compressing the disk press. In order to explain the additional compression created by the disk press, let's pay attention to Z and X stars in the scheme. Let's assume the distance between the black hole and each star is equal. However, the orbital speed of Z star is two times bigger than the orbital speed of X star. The formula to calculate centrifugal force is F equals M times V square divided by R. According to this formula, if the speed of Z star is two times faster, then it will be exposed to four times greater centrifugal force than X star. Despite the rapid increase in the speed, if the Z star is keeping its movement stable along its orbit, then the gravitational force that is pressing it towards the center of galaxy must increase four times. This simple calculation shows how much more compression effect is created by the disk press. This extra compression leads to larger pressure and temperature, which speeds up the process of heavy element forming in the star. 2. Talley fischer Law According to this law, there is a direct correlation between the brightness of a spiral galaxy and its mass and orbital speed. As known by many, the intensity of thermonuclear reaction within a star depends on the temperature and pressure in it. This intensity shows itself as brightness in the star. Having bigger mass of the galaxy means more amount of stars in the disk. Then, the effect of gravitational summing is born because of more number of stars. On the other hand, if the force of gravitation gets stronger, then it must be compensated by an increase in the orbital speed of the galactic disk. Otherwise, the structure of the galaxy will fall apart. As a result, the disk press becomes unavoidable, and the star glows brighter. 3. Greater and denser masses of intergalactic gases are accumulated in the disk. Logically, had there not been a force to keep them in the disk, dispersion would have scattered them in the whole halo. Star formation and supernova explosions usually happen in the disk area as well. All three processes must appear where disk press is strong.